Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Amen. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his company set sail from Paphos and came to Pega in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they passed on from Pega and came to Antioch of Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. 
After the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent them, saying, Brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you, and you that fear God, listen. The God of these people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. And for about 40 years, he bore with them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. And for about 450 years, and after that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, and of whom he testified and said, I have found in David the son of Jesse a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but after me, one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. The word of the Lord. Our response to the psalm is, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. My mercy and my faithfulness shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will call out to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock of my salvation. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Let us rise for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ, you are a faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and washed our sins in your blood. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. When Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples, he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
A servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of you all. I know whom I have chosen. It is that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives anyone whom I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise it to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Paul, in the first reading, had a deep and profound understanding of the presence of God in history, the presence of God in the past. Such an understanding is very key if we are to understand our lives in the present and our lives in the future. You need to have a deep and profound appreciation for the presence of God in your past. If you listen to the sermon that St. Paul preached in the first reading, you would see that his eyes indeed were open. He looked at the history of the children of Israel and he said to them, it has been God all the way. He looked at their past lives and he said to them, you will notice the omnipresence of God. God has been there every single step of the way. He said to them, when you were in the land of Egypt, it was God. When you came out of Egypt, God gave you Samuel. When you were asking for a king, God gave you Saul. When Saul failed you, God gave you David, a man out of his own heart. And then after David, God showed up again and gave you Jesus from the line of David. It has been God all the way. God is always present in our lives. Whenever situations happen, whenever things are going on in our lives, it is always possible to find an interpretation of those particular situations that do not exactly include God. Yes, the coronavirus is with us, and perhaps it's not going away for a while, but what is your interpretation? How do you see it? There are those who might see it purely from a financial perspective, economic perspective. Our economy has been grounded because of this disease. There is no money. The, the barrel of crude oil has gone down. That is their perspective. That is their sole perspective and reading of this particular situation. There are some who might see it as coronavirus has come to shut down society. They will see it only socially. You can no longer watch Premier League football. This coronavirus is so terrible, we can no longer go to the movies. We can no longer enjoy life as we know it. Just a social perspective. There are some who might see it only in a religious sense, just a religious perspective. We can no longer come to church. We can no longer attend vigil. But what St. Paul is telling us today is that if you are a Christian, you must have a God perspective. Whether it is a good thing or whether it is a bad thing, you must have a God perspective. Right from my birth up until this present moment, I should be able to trace 
the footprints of God in every single situation. Even right now, the difficulties that I am facing, I should be able to say that this is the footprint of God. This is the hand of God in all of it. And so let us pray through the grace of this Mass that will develop that keen sense of the presence of God in every of our situations. Not only the good ones, not only the pleasant ones, but even the bitter ones, even the difficult ones. We should be able to say that this is the hand of God in my life. And may he bless his word in our hearts today through Christ our Lord. Amen. 56. Hymn number 56. Lord, accept the gifts we offer as this Eucharistic feast. Bread and wine to be transformed now through the action of your priest. Take us to rule, Lord, transform us by your grace in us increase. Bear us as deep, your and spotless as the host of which so fine. Let all sing or sin be crushed out like the bread that forms the wine. As we to become partakers in this sacrifice divine. Take our gifts, Almighty Father, living God eternal truth, which we give through Christ our Savior, leading in Salvation to all present and our faith and love renew. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the glory and praise of his name for good and good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly past with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore those gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and they eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, yes. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred Martins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Jesus, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the saints of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the saints of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the saints of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. Oh my God, I firmly believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I adore you. I love you above all things and desire with all my heart to receive you into my soul. But since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my soul and dwell and remain there forever. I embrace you as though you have already come and unite myself entirely with you. Do not permit me to be ever separated from you again. Jesus, in the blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dying. Jesus, in the blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dead. Jesus, in the blessed sacrament of the altar, grant us a holy and a happy death. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Hymn number 91 from the Catholic Hymn Book. 91. Let a mortal flesh keep silence and we fear and trembling stand on the nothing earthly minded for weakness in his eyes. Christ our God to earth descend. Each the six wing seraph shall in with sleepless eye, though their faces to the presence, and sweet ceaseless voice they cry. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Easter sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The blessings and the peace of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. 144, hymn number 144. Yeah.